Greeting, Earthlings. I am the Gene Man. So, what is our concept of mutations? We all know it did provide Marvel Comics with the uh, idea of comics like Wolverine or other, but actually, a single addition in your base pair can lead to disastrous consequences. So, instead of the oh so cool Wolverine, you end up with diseases like cancer. Now, while we know that uh, the prices of commodities are increasing all the time, and when you live in Pakistan, that happens. But there's a particular technology that is decreasing day by day. Now, the Human Genome Project started uh, in like 1997 and costed nearly $4 uh, billion. And once that was done, now there's a drastic decrease in the price. And it is now available for merely $4,000, which is roughly equal to 3.5 lakh rupees. So that is a drastic drop and has ramifications that are going to define the diagnostic parameters of the coming decade. Now, part of the research that I do in FC currently is about studying bacteria and how they interact with one another based on their genomes. So as a layman, you can say that I'm uh, checking their social networking. So why not exploit this idea in the case of humans as well? You know, ex exploit it to a certain extent where it can be applied on humans as well. So moving forward, what we see over here is uh, moving towards the notion of uh, a common stereotype that exists in our society. You know, the caste system is a stereotype. Well, I'm not going to say that the caste system is a mutation, but it's a stereotype that can be used in a positive manner. We know that the, a particular mutation that exists in a caste, it is preserved in it. Uh, one thing of our caste system that is very prevalent is that if you belong to a particular caste, we are forced to marry in it. So that can be used in a particular scenario. Let us take an example of a woman who belongs to a particular caste, has, suffers from breast cancer. Now, that mutation that carries the gene for causing cancer in that woman is conserved in that woman. So we can use it as a very relevant uh, parameter at the end of the day. Now, another relevant point is the importance of social networks. Now, you all might have updated your statuses or tweeted before coming to Canada. So social networks are really defining the mode, how we interact with another. So why not include it in the form of genetics? Yes, you're going to say, what a nerd idea. But on a very general level, if we can do it, what I'm suggesting is something bigger than a Facebook of genes. It's not like I'm going to say that the world is not real. It's a metric that has been pulled in front of your eyes, and you have two options. But you can literally see the worlds in the form of bricks. Now, what are these bricks? Now, the DNA is a building. Uh, if you take it as a building, then the bricks in it are the uh, base pairs that are popularly known as adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine or nucleotides or the ATGCs of molecular biology. Now in front of you is the genome sequence of James Watson, who happened to, uh, one of the chromosomes, who happens to be the, uh, g gave the structure of DNA. Now this database is as incomprehensible as the English of some of our female heroines, but you need to understand that we need to relate it to people. So when we apply the uh, approach of a social network, what we're essentially suggesting, we, have get, we are moving towards an age where the genomic sequence is getting lesser and lesser. We are moving towards an age where the social interaction and the social networks are evolving with time and time. So when you merge them both, what do you get? Beautiful applications. Because when you ask a person that you have to get your genome sequence, they won't do it. But you give them a social network ID, and they would be ready to do it. And then you get fabulous you know, uh, applications like the marriage analyzer so that you don't break everything on your spouse later. And there's a surprising fact. The scientists have isolated a cheating gene. So you can check the fidelity of your partner. <laughs> so on another level, this is one of the databases, uh, which is the NCBI database. So once you extend the idea, because when you take it from the domain of the scientist to the domain of the public, what you are basically doing is you are staving off the patent cliff as well. You are basically telling that, because when you talk about the genome, when you talk about genetics as a whole, when I say that you have to study genetics, you will just stare at me like I'm King Kong. But when you integrate the idea of social networking, it becomes a study-based tool that can be employed for the benefit of the society as a whole. Now, once we are through uh, understanding our diagnostic in the term of ATGs and Cs, what we are basically doing is we are going towards an era of personalized medicine. Now, we all spend uh, billions of rupees, monies on therapies that don't pay off and pills that are merely fantasy for non-responders. So why not merge that idea where you can ha develop that uh, knowledge and also the interaction of the people so that they are able to share it. Now with sharing, there is, because as the famous quote goes, with power comes responsibility, with sharing is the same thing. That why, there is the ethical question, why would you share your personal genome information with other people? 
Now, when you apply that idea, you might think that that personal genome is your own property and you cannot share it with other people. Part of it is, but part of it isn't. It's like Facebook, that you do have the option of sharing what you want. So extending to that idea where you just get those sequences done, and is there a prototype that exists? Yes, there is a prototype, uh, which is known as the Personalized Genome Project which has been launched in America, and they are taking 1,000 individuals, and they are sequencing them, and studying how the social interactions would take place in them. So that also falls into the domain of personalized medicine. Now, uh, on a very proud note, Pakistan is the sixth country in the world who has successfully sequenced the genome of an individual. Uh, now, that individual was Dr. Atao Rahman from HEC. This shows that we're moving ahead uh, in the race of genomics as well. So when we just integrate both of them, what we get is basically an understanding of how the diagnostic of the coming era is going to be defined and how we're moving towards an era of social networking and personalized medicine as a whole. Thank you for your time.